God is faithful. The word faithful means that God keeps his word. He keeps his promises. The Bible says that heaven and earth will pass away, but not one dotting of the eye or cross on the tear of the word of God will pass away. So when God says, when I bring my tithe into the storehouse and bring my offerings, okay, God says, all this will happen, and God says, prove me. So but when you're walking in offense, you can't prove him. <laughs> you, see how, you see how big those offenses, when you're walking in offense, you are holding on to your old TV box. God wants to give you a new flat screen, 72 inch. But you have your 20 inch heavy old Sanyo. You are grabbing on Toshiba. Sonic, the old one, heavy box. You are carrying it. Ugh. And God said, come on to me, all you that labor, I believe it. Like, okay, I like my box, Lord. I like my offense. So when you're offended, you cannot receive what God is saying here. Verse, verse 10. God said, I'll, I'll do this. God said, prove me. Verse 11, and I'll rebuild the vine for your sakes, and you shall not destroy the fruit of the ground, neither shall your vine cast out fruit before the time in the field, said the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be the last time that said the Lord of hosts. That's not the end. Verse 13, as you're going now, your words have been started against me. Your words always have come as an opposition to me. Or, what about saying, you have said terrible things about me, says the Lord. Yet you say, what have we spoken so much against thee? And what have we done? What have we said, Lord? Now this is what God says the same. You have said it is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? Let me read the other one. You have said, what's the use of serving God? What have we gained by obeying his commands or trying to show the Lord all my that we're sorry for our sins? Verse 15. And now we call the proud happy. Yet yeah, they that walk wickedness are set up. They that tempt God are even delivered. From now we say, Blessed are the arrogant. For, for those who do evil get rich. And those that dare God to punish them go from home. Many times Christians say, Oh, you. Many, and see, many times we say these things casually. If somebody buys a new car, oh, he's yes, a drug dealer. Because you know, drug dealers they have money. When you say that, what are you saying about yourself? You must be a drug dealer. They have money. You know, you must have some, some shady deal. Now, I'm not saying that they're, they're not into it, but that's really not your business. A lot of times, Christians talk down the blessing of God on their lives by talking up the works of the devil. You talk down the blessings, I talk up over the devil. All them drug dealers, they are rich, all them rappers. All them, you know, I don't want to mention the rappers' names. That sing all this nonsense, they are all, they are rich. So like to, to be rich, says you have to, you have to be, you don't have to be, you have, you have to be clean. And then there is the one where we say this, and, I, and you are not trying to do something unclean with your hands, it's a problem. When you say, oh, all the, all the rich people, they're all going through, of course, you know, they, you know the rich man is clean. I don't need to read for the long So what are you saying about yourself? Jesus has made poor for you so that you through his poverty might become rich. And then you are not getting those riches because in your mind, okay, don't, for you to get those riches, you have to be unclean. You just said it. You wonder why it's, you see, I'm just trying to show you how, how our mouth stops our prosperity. Your mouth, you see, here is, we just read, it, we just read about bring all the tithes. So God says, I'll open the windows of heaven, a boy had a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive it. And God says, your words are in opposition to me. Your words have become stout against me. You have said it only those who are bad or evil, only those who commit crime, only those who, you know, who sell weed and who sell drugs and the ones that make it. Oh, for you to be promoted on the job, you gotta sleep with the boss. When you say those kind of things, even Christians say that. A Christians buy into those things and they wonder why the word is not working for them. You wonder why the word is not working for you. You know, the reason why I'm not getting, oh, because I have an accent. You wonder why the, and if God says, I'll bless you in the city, I'll bless you in the field. God blessed Joseph in a foreign land. Joseph had a foreign accent, had a different skin color, was worshiping a different God, and Joseph was also a slave. And God blessed him in a foreign land. But now you use your mouth and you talk down yourself, and you wonder why the blessing is not coming up. When the prices go up, the blessings come down. Yeah, they come down, but because am I receiving it? Am I too busy getting offended? Am I offended with the city? Am I offended with the people of the community? Oh, all these Americans, they don't like we non-American born, you know, American born people. 
Those black Americans don't like you know, Africans from all Caribbean. We say those things, but you know what we're saying? What we're saying is that we are speaking against our favor. When God says that he will bless you, God says he will surround you with favor as a shield. That means that even if that person does not like you, the favor of God will protect you from them. If you remember the scripture, I want you to make sure, please make sure you read that scripture that we read today. Our scripture for the week, make sure, or the routine that we read, conventional to make sure you do it. Psalm 31, verse 16 to 24, you're going to see it. God will protect you from the insults of men. But that happens when you're not offended by them. You're not offended by them. If I allow, if I allow what they've done to me to make them have an opinion about them, remember I told you, offense is self-preservation. I'm not going to be friends with any white person for what they've done to our fathers. <coughs> That's offense. <laughs> A lot of people don't realize that. I'm mad at my dad because he was not there for my mom when I was growing up. Offense. Offense. I'm mad at my friend because when my grandma died, she didn't call me, she didn't come to the funeral. Offense. Offense. It seems like in that office, it's like they only promote only the white people and I'm not white. Offense, right there. And you wonder why you're not making progress. You cannot walk in offense as a believer. You've got to walk in love. Agape love. <laughs> agape love. Not phileo. Not phileo. Agape love. You cannot walk in offense as a believer. You cannot do it. It is not allowed. As a believer, it's against your nature to walk in offense. It will have to walk against you. When you're walking in offense, it will walk against you. It's like, a, it's like a fish trying to live on land. Even though land, other animals live on land. Okay? Dogs and cats and other things live on land. Comfortably. A fish cannot live on land. That's how a believer cannot walk in offense. Or should not walk in offense. It will walk against you. It's not your nature. It's not in your nature to walk against you. It will work against you. You cannot afford, I mean, God says it clearly here. People are offended at God because people are saying, oh, look at all. A lot of people are, a lot of people are, I mean, I could go into this from a racial context where you have a lot of people who are, who have a skin color, a darker skin color, are offended with those who have a brother skin color because of racism, of, of, of slavery. And people today who are living in 2013 who did not smell slavery and all that stuff today are offended and there are people over what their ancestors with those other people that did not partake in. They are offended at them. That's what I'm talking about white people. I don't have white people. I don't, I don't deal with them. I don't deal with those white people. It's still an offense. Off end. Off end. It's like one of, one of the things when you say when you get to Rome, you've been like Romans. Okay. When I first came to this country, for example, let me just an example, I made up my mind. I'm not in Africa anymore. I'm not in the Caribbean anymore. I'm in America. For me to enjoy and really, you know, live well here, I need to relate to Americans who know the system, who know how things are done. I cannot be offended at them. Even when they say, huh, huh, when I'm talking, I cannot be offended. I have to, in fact, I have to avoid the spirit of offense and relate to them because I want something from them. I want to learn something. I want to get something from them. I want to gain something from them. If I get offended, I will not get my end. My, I will not get the fulfillment of that which I desire. I will go to self preservation mode and stick to myself and not get the benefit that I will get from relating to them. I mean, even let's talk about the whole black thing. When did, when did black people get involved in America? I mean, when I say get involved, I mean actively as a as a, a race of people. In the 60s, 50s, 60s, civil rights era, and all that stuff, okay? Therefore, white America is way is much more advanced than black America relative to finances, relative to structure. Way more advanced. They've, they've done this thing for, for many, many more years than black people. Therefore, there's no reason why. I, as a black believer today, living on this earth today in America, would be offended or stay in offense. So I say, well, you are, your parents are not born yet. Listen, leave that alone. Leave that alone. We're talking the word of God here. We're talking about the Bible here. The Bible is it's applicable in this generation. If it's not applicable, you might as well just burn the Bible and forget it. If the Bible is not relevant to issues of racism, I speak to them in a way that we can profit 
it and do well, then we might as well just burn the Bible. The Bible is the Bible says <laughs> the Bible says the Bible is profitable for all in all things. Okay, therefore the Bible has an answer for the issue of racism. So in that case, relative to offense, if I as a black man, even if let's assume I was born in America and my parents, you know, were born American born and all that stuff, therefore we came through generations of slavery and all that. But let's assume that's the case. I cannot afford to get myself locked up as a born again Christian in offense. It's against my nature. Offense will offend me. Offense will offend me. Offense is not agape. The Bible says if you don't walk in, in love, you are walking in death. And not physical death primarily, but absence of God's favor and influence upon your life. Because God could want to use the white person to bless you. But here you are, you are so offended that you're in self preservation mode, you have a negative vibe around you. The white person says hello to you, don't smile that. Because you're offended. I don't want to be their friend. You are at school with them, you are at work with them, you live in the same community, you don't want to talk to them because they are white. Or vice versa, but even the white person listening right now, I don't think because they are black. Same thing. Offense for no reason. For no reason. There are benefits that I can get from you and can get from me in relationship. There are benefits of relation of friend of friendship relationship. Benefits of marital relationship, friendship, benefits of community relationship. We're all in the same city. We're all having we all have to go through the same challenges and experiences. And therefore, when we can we can flow together, we can accomplish more together. Acts 24, verse 16. The time is very up. We're gonna do part two on Wednesday. Part two on Wednesday. I didn't I didn't uh, I didn't finish this message, but part two Wednesday. Amen. Acts chapter. 24 verse 16. Acts of the Apostle, or Acts of the Holy Spirit through the Apostles, to the 24 verse 16. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's why I like to go to them big churches. Big churches, nobody knows each other there. Big churches, I don't like them. Meanwhile, you go to a small church, or you're the pastor of a small church, you're jealous, right? It's a big church. In this big church, nobody there is real. They are all a bunch of fakes all coming together. They all hide in the crowd. Why are you, why are you jealous? Jealousy leads to offense, too. Jealousy leads to offense. Instead of you focusing on your, on your small church and building your small church and trusting that God will bless what you're doing and God will increase what you're doing, even if you are 10 or 5 or 6. God will bless, God will increase to grow. Focus on that. I love the big brother, the big church brother. Pray for him, love on him. Amen. People there who are, who are calling to you are faith. They are human like you and I. Pray for them. Love on them. Don't speak evil about them. Walk in love. Hallelujah. Acts <laughs> uh, 24 verse 16. You know what say? Here and herein I exercise myself. Everybody say exercise. Say exercise. exercise. It says, I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense towards God and men. Toward men. I exercise myself. This means that it's not going to just happen overnight. You've got to exercise yourself. You've got to sometimes slap yourself. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you know what I'm talking about, figuratively. You've got to check yourself. I exercise myself. I exercise myself. Look at it again. I hear it in this matter. I exercise myself to always have a conscience void of offense toward God and toward man. When I don't understand, I say, God, I don't understand. I don't understand, Lord. I worship you. I trust you. I don't understand, Lord, but I trust you. Someone does something to you that, eh, pray for them. They're humans like you. You might say, how could you pray for them? Father, I pray for them in Jesus' name. Lord, just bless them. Even if you don't know what to do, Jesus said, bless, don't curse. Bless, just Father, I bless them in Jesus' name. Thank God for speaking in tongues. Father, Even though your, your, your emotions are like saying, ah, <laughs> go get them, go get them. <laughs> but you walk in love. Avoid the spirit of offense. 
We're going to put you on this on Wednesday. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. Thank you, Father, for opening our eyes to the spirit of offense and how to avoid it. For leaving us with this charge to exercise ourselves, to build and develop a conscience void of offense toward man and toward God. Holy Spirit, you are our helper. We depend on you. We rely on you. Thank you because you are strength now also. Therefore, you strengthen us. You are enabler. Therefore, you enable us. We are not without strength. We're not without help. We're not helpless. We're not weak. But Father, your strength is made manifest in our weakness. Your strength is available to us even in this particular issue relative to walk in love. And we trust you knowing that Lord God, you are working in us both to will and to do of a good pleasure. Therefore, Father, we honor you. We thank you. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise Amen. God.